Hey everybody, today I wanted to share with you a bunch of Zigbee devices that I've had a lot of success with. And the great thing about all of these is that none of the items that I'm going to show you require a hub. They all work with your favorite smart home device, Google, Amazon, smart things, and of course, I'm going to set them all up today with Home Assistant. And if you're using them with Home Assistant, I use the Go Control USB key device, which also has Z-Wave protocol as well. It's one of the best that I've ever used, and we're not even going to talk about Z-Wave today. This little USB device is 37 bucks, so it's no-brainer if you're looking to add Zigbee to Home Assistant with Z-Wave as an added bonus. So I started this all off with a little shopping spree on Amazon to see, well, what I could get. And the prices are actually pretty affordable. In fact, I don't think a single device I'll look at today will break 50 bucks. Now, I also have some super classified knowledge about some upcoming Amazon Prime sales that I can't really mention, but there might be some sales up to 50% off. All the links are in the description. Some of them are affiliate. So if you click on them, you're gonna be able to find the product. And I'm gonna get a small commission that helps support the channel. You win, I win, we all win, and of course, guys, I thank you. And look, if you don't click on the links, that's fine too. But I'd really appreciate it if you take a second to click that thumbs up and help me out. Subscribe if you're not already. Share this video with friends who might want to learn something about home automation. And guys, leave me some comments. If you see an awesome deal during Prime Day, you see a gadget, something I didn't cover, something you think I should have covered, put in the comments below. Let us all know. Okay, enough of that. Let's take a look at the best Zigbee devices in a bunch of different categories today. First off, buttons. Now listen, I've used so many buttons before. Some of my favorites, they're Ikea ones, which are pretty cheap, a little difficult to get working, but I recently found this simple little button from a company called Third Reality. Now, there's a bunch of different versions and bundles that they have, but the one I bought was about 20 bucks, and it came in a variety of different bright colors. Kind of looks just like a doorbell. It's super simple to set up, and it adds a bunch of triggers, including a short button push, long button push, double button push, and of course, monitoring of the battery is in Home Assistant. It comes with some double-sided tape, as well as some double-sided magnets. Also has a bunch of stickers that you can put on the button to indicate I guess what it might do. It's super inexpensive way to add a simple control to anything that you might want to trigger. Say you just want to have a simple lights on and off switch or you could stick it to your fridge and when you've run out of milk you push the button once and it would use an automation to add that to a list to remind you. Not to mention it would make a perfect doorbell for any office or house where yet you, you don't have a doorbell in the location you might need one. Next up Temperature and humidity sensors. Who doesn't need temperature and humidity sensors? Now, my go-to for this is the Aeon 6-in-1 device. It gives you motion, UV, etc., but it also has temp and humidity. Now, there's a few things I don't like about them. First, they use non-standard batteries, which sucks. And second, it's an expensive device. Now, if all I want is temperature and humidity, well, then they're not really the right option. The final thing with those is there's no display on them. So if I'm in a room and I want to know the temperature, oh, I need to pull my phone out, check my app just to find the temp. So for my cheaper alternative, I picked up a two pack of Sonoff Zigbee devices. They run on a standard battery. Setup in Home Assistant was super easy. They provide the temp and the humidity as well as the battery status to Home Assistant so you can monitor them. It has a nice big LCD display so I can put these in a room around the house and it's super easy to just glance up and see the temperature. It comes with instructions, a little plastic dock that you can stick to the wall using the provided 3M tape and it's got a little kickstand if you just want to put it on a table. Best of all, this one came in a two pack for 30 bucks. 15 bucks per room, that's actually pretty good. Okay, moving on, who needs some power? You start plugging in all these smart home devices and you know what, you're gonna run out of outlets pretty quick. That's why I'm always looking for a power bar. Now my go-to, my favorite in the power bar line is Casa. But listen, they're pretty expensive. Unless it's high-end devices, they cost like 150 bucks each and they're not even Zigbee. So the one I use today is a Tuya-based Zigbee product. And yes, it feels a little bit cheaper than those other ones I'm talking about. But listen, I use a bunch of these around the house and they're great because it's easy to add to Home Assistant. Each outlet is individually controllable and you can also control the USB ports, turn those on and off as well. You can set up the behavior after a power loss to either return to the previous state or you can have it default to on or off and that's per switch. My favorite use for these is for charging stations, whether it's drone batteries and camera batteries or power tools. You can go ahead and plug things into this. You can use an automation to turn those power bars on, let them run for say six hours to make sure everything gets charged up good and then turn off automatically so you don't end up ruining your batteries. Okay, more sensors. This time again, we're looking at another third reality product. And this one's kind of interesting because it's a vibration sensor. Again, it's nice because it uses two AAA batteries, which it comes with and a really super simple sensor that can be used in all sorts of places. 
It detects vibrations and movement. So you could put it in a drawer, on a door, a workbench, pretty much any place you want to get a notification. You can also use it to trigger lights. Put it on, a, say, your countertop in the kitchen, tape it underneath, or stick it to the side of the fridge. When someone opens the fridge or you knock on the countertop, it's automatically going to say turn on some lighting or pretty much whatever you want it to do. And then you can tie that in with an automation to make sure it turns off a few minutes later. Now, this little device has a built-in audible alarm. And this sounds for about five seconds when it detects vibration. You can turn this on or off, and you can also decide how loud this is going to be. So nice and quiet is the default setting, and that's just to let you know it's detected you and it's going to do what you want it to. Or you can actually turn it up really loud. So if somebody's going through that drawer you don't want them to, well, it's going to scare them away and it's going to let you hear it anywhere in the house. It comes with 3M tape, so you can stick it under the table or under that countertop, and it's super affordable option at 20 bucks. Tons of options you could do with this thing. Now, how about strip lights? I use a lot of custom lights. I actually have some videos coming up if you're interested in this type of thing. I usually buy my own strips, microprocessor, and I install an app called WLED. This is my favorite and it's super customizable, but sometimes I just want some simple color light strips. For this, I like to go with Aquara. They make great Zigbee light switches. The T1 strip, it's a 24 volt light, so it's super bright, provides RGB lighting, and it works easily with your favorite Zigbee hub, including, of course, Home Assistant, Google, Amazon, SmartThings, Apple, you name it, works with them all. You can cut these things down to size. They have 3M tape on the back, it's super sticky, and well, they're just easy to use. At 50 bucks, it's an easy way to add some mood lighting to pretty much any situation. Now. How about motion? I've tried some cheap motion sensors in the past, and I'm going to be honest, you kind of get what you pay for with these ones. And it's not always great. My biggest issue with the cheap ones is battery life. Depending on how it's being used, it can drain the battery pretty quick. So if I can, I like to usually use plugged in or wired motion sensors. But when I do go wireless, my go-to, it's the Hive motion sensor. I like these because they use a standard battery. And to be honest, they actually last pretty long. For a $35 device, they work really well. You might even notice there's one right over here on my shelf, and I use it right here in my office all the time. That one's been sitting there probably for about a year now, and I haven't touched the battery. Added bonus with these, and your mileage may vary, but mine actually report the temperature as well to Home Assistant. But they don't mention that anywhere in the box, the package, or the website, so it was a nice little bonus for the $35. Bucks. Okay. Moving along, how about contact sensors? While this one looks just like the last, the motion sensor, takes the same battery and works as expected, and I guess that's because it's also made by Hive. Now it's a door or window contact sensor. Again, it says nothing about it, but it also includes a temperature sensor if you're using it in Home Assistant. Super easy to install, just like the rest, it works right out of the box, reports battery, temp, and of course, open and close states. This is perfect to use on a garage door, window, or really anything you need that opens and closes, and it's super cheap, 15 bucks. Light bulbs, you still have those, right? Again, winner winner here is Hive, or the Aurora Zigbee bulbs. I think they're just rebranded. They look good, so if they're in an exposed light fixture, you don't have to worry. It has RBG color changing and a full range of white, 2000 to 65,000 Kelvin. So they're great for any situation. I have these around the house in what I call globe lights. You know, those ones that are hanging over couches and things like that. They look great in the open. And I have an automation that turns all of these lights green on St. Patrick's Day every year, back to white the next day. They're super fun, super affordable. I saw two packs for like 30 bucks. Okay, honorable mention to the Sonoff smart switches only because they're one of the cheapest I found and they work great. They're only 12 bucks for one of these on Amazon. They're great because when you plug them into the wall, they don't block the bottom outlet. You can still use the entire thing. Thought I'd include them because I use a bunch of them around the house as well. That's it. Remember Prime Day is coming up. So if you're looking to stock up, now is the time. Have fun and I hope to see you guys in the next one.